Thank you for tapping on that play button. My name is Sandy Alnock, and I'm an artist. I work in a lot of different mediums. And the fact that I work in so many mediums means I have a lot of supplies around. And sometimes they try to play together and they cross contaminate each other. And I use things that you shouldn't use together and they work out terribly. And then sometimes they work out great. I recently found myself wondering why it is that I no longer use the technique of adding color pencil detail on top of alcohol marker drawings. Because I used to use that all the time, but I haven't in a hot minute or two. Well, I realized the reason is because I discovered Stonehenge drawing paper for my colored pencils. And I love the experience of drawing on that paper. I love the way the pencil lays down. I love the way I can blend it. I love a lot of things about it. And I couldn't do that on marker papers. It didn't feel the same. So I'm just not drawn to trying to do that technique anymore. Well, I wondered instead of bringing the color pencils to the alcohol marker paper, what happens if I bring the alcohol markers to the colored pencil paper? Hmm, would it work? And would the paper retain the surface that I love so much for colored pencil by the time I got all that alcohol marker work done? I'm going to share a few techniques that I found work really well using the markers, pencils, and paper. I'm going to also show you a demo from something that's coming up in the near future that I'm very excited about. Are we ready? Let's go do this. The feel of drawing with alcohol markers on drawing paper is going to be very different, just so you know. It's got more friction on the surface because there's a softer texture to it than there is on marker papers that you might have been used to. So on the left is Nina Solar White. On the right is the Stonehenge. You can even hear the difference between the two. The coloring is also a little bit lighter on the drawing paper due to that bumpy surface. I'm going to turn this into a chunk of fur, which means I need to have a dark color at the base where it touches the animal and then lighter toward the tips of the fur. So I'm going to start by doing just some blending, not massively trying to be perfect in my blending because I'm going to add pencil to it. When you have that, that kind of backup in your mind, you're going to use pencil anyway, then you don't need to kill yourself over trying to get the color underneath to be perfect, to just get it good enough that you have some sense of roundness and get rid of the white of the paper. And then when you put the pencil on top, you're going to be able to achieve a lot more of the look you're going for. So here I was trying to see how light of tips I could get on the light end. And I was able to get much softer tips, much lighter look on the drawing paper than I was on the Nina. So that was a huge benefit. And then we've got adding more of the darks, more of the specific texture of the hair itself, drawing in individual hairs. And you get very sharp lines on the marker paper, but you get broken lines on the drawing paper. Now you might say, oh, I don't like that, but hang tight. Just stay with me a minute. Putting in some even darker colors still. And then I wanted to do something I, I do a lot, which is going over a texture with another color, a lighter version of the color, just to start to bring it all together so it doesn't look like it's overdrawn. And immediately the texture on the Stonehenge softened much more than on the Nina. So now let's switch over to pencil and see what happens. Just adding some brown pencil and then I'll add some black to try to get some good contrast. And this was where the night and day difference started to come in because the texture of the paper actually pulls more pigment off of the tip of the pencil. That's why you get stronger color for your colored pencils on a drawing paper than on something really smooth. At the risk of giving you a heart attack, yes, I'm using a Copic marker on top of pencil. I know we've been told not to do that, but alcohol is a blender solution for pencil pigment. And look how much richer and darker I can get the color on the drawing paper because the drawing paper has so much more pigment. 
all I have to do is scribble off the color on scratch paper and my marker is fine. It could get discolored. And if that bothers you, don't do this. But I find that it works really great and doesn't affect the performance of my markers. My white pencil even comes out more white because of the texture pulling more pigment onto the paper itself. It's kind of crazy what you can learn when you start breaking the rules about what you can and can't use together. Now for that project I spoke of. For a long time, I've had people asking me for classes on drawing animals. And as someone who aspired once to be a wildlife illustrator, I really wanted to do it. There's a lot of reasons I didn't. But as I started playing with this paper marker pencil combo, I got excited about teaching an animal class. But when I added up just how much footage I had suddenly collected, almost seven hours of drawing for this level four class, it's, it was orders of magnitude more than I'd ever put together in one class. And it was going to have to be expensive because of that. But it's also one reason I'd been putting off an animals class because the way I had been structuring my classes, five to 10 bite-sized lessons, you know, a series that builds on each other. You learn one thing and then in the next piece of art, you learn something to add to that knowledge. That was how I taught. And I had thought through that kind of process with these animals, but with that much content, it would, the class was just going to be out of reach. But I've been pondering whether or not I have to keep that model for all my classes or not. I mean, really, I'm not even sure anybody notices all that structure that I follow. Maybe some of you teachers do. Well, anyway, I'm going to be separating all my little animal friends into individual classes instead of one big class. There's also going to be a big one, but I'm going to separate them so that they're smaller classes that will keep them more affordable. And then you can also just pick the ones that you want. I'll have to do some duplicate explaining of some of the very similar techniques, but I think you'll manage with that just fine. There will be that big kahuna class with all 10 images in it. And this little bear cub is number 11. So he's going to be a bonus only in the big class. So if you really get invested, you'll get a narrated version of him. But this is all part of a new category of classes that I'm going to be calling drawing on nature with realistic drawings in various mediums, in smaller classes like this, on various topics in nature. And I would love your suggestions of topics and mediums as well. I expect it'll be about a week or more till I get this first group finished and ready for you, but I wanted to at least let you know that this is coming. If you'd like to be first to hear about the progress I'm making on Drawing on Nature, please do click on the link in the doobly-doo to subscribe to the art-classes.com email list because that's where you're going to be first to hear about it. And I will see you again on Saturday. At least I hope I'll be here Saturday. I'm supposed to be on jury duty. So maybe you're going to get courtroom waiting room sketches. I don't really know. Stay tuned and find out. Who knows what's coming? Go out and have a great week. Create something every day and I'll see you soon.